All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, we came across a video on social media of youth at the INEC PVC Collection <laughs> Center showing their dedication to getting their PVCs and airing, I mean, sorry, arming themselves with the power to choose in the upcoming election, right? Um, so the video, of course, is uh, very interesting and very funny, right? So despite the clear challenges around the PVC collection, voting and the insecurity, a lot of young people are going for their PVCs. You must love the Nigerian youth, right? Now, despite the clear challenges around PVC collections, voting and insecurity in the country, you can tell that this generation of Nigerian youth are more politically inclined and ready to participate, maybe even more than their predecessors. So, however, is the ballot enough, right? That's the question, to change and drive good governance. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 uh, with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so, I mean, this is a very interesting conversation, right? Um, the idea uh, of linking the ballot to good governance in Nigeria, now, is it us, like, is it wishful thinking? Or is this actually, you know, a possibility or a chance for better governance, right, um, through the ballot. Do you do you agree that the ballot can do any good for us? Okay, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> so personally, I think it can, mm. right? I, I strongly believe that it can if used wisely. Mm. So, like as I, I was saying earlier, I said my ballot is stronger than the bullets. Well, Abraham Lincoln said that. Even Malcolm X said the, sa the same thing. That ballot is your ballot is is so much power. Imagine it's like having a catapult and you know you want to shoot a bird and then you instead of using your catapult to shoot the bird you then want to pick up a random object around you i mean you have the catapult in your hand why not just use it and you know hit your targets so i think the ballot is actually pos it's possible to use the ballot rather for us to drive good governance okay how yeah. about you Della? yes i do agree as well uh but however i would say that um it is also important that um we have the right knowledge in order to be able to make informed decisions when we're using the ballot, you know. To, and then, again, it doesn't stop at the ballot. You know, there is the responsibility of the citizens, you know, to ensure that there is good governance. It's not, I, I think the mistake we make is we think our work stops at the ballot. Okay, I've voted and that, that's it, I'm mm. done. We don't go back to say that, okay, now you are here. This, are you meeting this? You, you said you were going to do this. Have you done this? Are you representing me well? I, I mean, are you implementing policies that are serving me? And until we do that, I'm not very sure that the crop of leadership that we have would understand that they're actually accountable to the people who actually put them there. So we must go beyond the ballot to ensure good governance. Absolutely. Um, so for me, I think it's a mixed feeling for me because, yes, the, the ballot can, can be powerful, but uh, the Nigerian system, mm. still, I still struggle a bit in my head to see how we can use just the ballot to deliver. But that is me, just being me right mm -hmm. let me bring in our expert now daily faruti me is a retired Ouch. legal practitioner author two of two pro thought provoking and insightful books do not die in their war and the imperatives of the nigerian revolution the spokesperson currently of the um, labor party presidential uh, campaign 2023 presidential campaign for southwest region so he's a very passionate Nigerian and is also very passionate about the birth of a new Nigeria and he's joined us live via Zoom. Thank you so much Mr. Farutimi for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. 
It's a pleasure to be with you. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the show. All right. So, I mean, this conversation, we will continue to twist it and turn it and, you know, mix it up and all of those things. But, hey, we've been talking to you for a while now. And 2023, we've been shouting 2023. 2023 is finally here. And 2023 is the year where we as Nigerians will go to the ballot and, you know, try to see how we can, um, what's it called, use our power to drive good governance. Because all of these things is not so much about the politics mm. of um, the game, right? The politics. It's more about the governance system, which we have seen that there's a huge failure, right, in Nigeria. So I am wondering, can... Can we truly um, see this ballot structure drive good governance in Nigeria? Because it seems like in Nigeria, everything, you might need to get to that point of maybe force or something for us to be able to get certain things done. Given the history, right? It's not, it's not likely that it seems like our leadership can reason, you know, to certain kinds of, or you can, you can draw up empathy or talk to their conscience or something. Mm. So now I'm thinking, is, is the ballot structures truly effective in driving um, good governance? I mean, that's why we had Let to bring me, you to come and help us break it down. See, uh, <laughs> the first thing the ruiners of Nigeria would want you to do is to believe that the ballot is useless. Mm. That is the first thing they want you to believe. In actual fact, even those who should facilitate the exercise of your franchise, INEC, will do everything it can to make sure that you do not exercise that franchise. Mm. So the system is designed to alienate you from your ballot. But that is without prejudice to the fact that for as long as human society has transcended away from bearing arms to enforce will, and we have built society. And ours is supposedly one that is found on democracy. It means that they have to pretend that our votes count. And we have a unique moment in history. You and I have been having these conversations for some time. And if you recall, I more or less predicted this moment in our discussion last year. Yeah. I told you that a leader would have to emerge behind whom the people would be inspired to kill. And that it is only when we kill behind a leader who has a vision and has the capacity to communicate this vision in relatable terms that the average man on the Nigerian street can understand and relate to, that it is at that point that we would have what I then call the revolution. Some people expected that revolution to happen with people wearing berets, maybe more people looking like me, carrying their beer, quoting Karl Marx and Lenin. Well, the one that is leading this particular revolution is busy quoting statistics. He's a rank capitalist, but he is the one behind whom all of us have elected to kill because we recognize that we must find a different way forward. Mm. So you find very easily that the ballot in Nigeria is the only choice you have if you are not going to carry a gun. And since there are more of us who prefer not to carry guns in order to demand change, because in Nigerian state, you must be careful to understand, would prefer that we embrace violence and carry guns. Mm. Even when people did not embrace violence and they merely protested peacefully, they were killed. It was in the immediate aftermath of the NSAS protest, the panel's report, that I started speaking with you. I told you at the time that we will encourage the people to go and register to vote so that they will use their ballot since they can no longer protest on the street. They will protest at the ballot boxes. Mm. That is what you see coming up in, in, in 40 days' time. So the ballot matters, and that ballot, with our participation, the lady was very clear. That, um, she spoke about the place of knowledge in the choices the electorates would make. 
People like myself have been busy backing and making noise and trying to let the people understand the issues so that they can connect it, so that they would understand that elections have consequences, so that they would understand that if the ballot were to be truly as useless as the system would have them believe that it is, why are they buying it? Why are they bringing thugs to chase them away from exercising their rights? Why is it that all of a sudden, APC councillors and House of Assembly members who had never remembered the existence of the people are buying data from INEX staff and they are busy texting people personally. I'm sure some of you might have received those text messages. Why is it now they suddenly remember the existence of the citizens? The ballot matters and it is a plausible path to delivering change when the leadership is right. We are blessed to have an inflection point, but let nobody tell you that the ballot does not matter. If it does not matter, all the gift hamper that APC is giving people up and down the place because they have gone to register, would they be giving it? Don't let them disparage the vote. It matters, and it is what will chase them away from power. Awesome. <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> well said, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, so um, very interesting that you have said this and then you actually agreed with Adiola about how the electorate needs to have the knowledge to be able to make informed decisions. So I was going to ask you, do you think that Nigeria is actually, or rather Nigerians as a whole now, are actually ready? That's the well, question, you know, sir. You know, <laughs> let me say this to you. Yes, I think I have said this to who were before, I was on this show, and I recall making clear that I said since 2018, I think it must have been around February 2018, yes. that if Tinubu wins in 2023 election, I will leave Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That was in 2018. Most people make the error of thinking that that was born out of any care or fear mm -hmm. for Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his talks. It has nothing to do with that is a function of the fact that I wouldn't be able to live in a society that would have found the grace to elect such a person. Mm. It, the people we elect are reflections of who we are. True. We have spoken at length about the evil nature of our rulers, but we cannot readily excuse ourselves because even though our democracy is not perfect, we have tolerated evil and become acculturated to it. Mm. We've completely forgotten about values. Mm. So this for me, this coming election is not about, is not really as much about electing a president or the other ones, the governors, the House of Reps Assembly and the senators. It's not really about that. It's about us as a people, as a collective. Who are we? What do we really hold dear? What kind of people are we? we, we we've hidden behind the rulers for too long. We've blamed our woes on the pimpish, consumptive men whom we have elected as rulers over our country. For too long, we have, um, we have blamed our woes on those ones. We've blamed it on them as though they are the reasons we are where we are. But the truth is we should really look more closely in our own mirror, when we begin to look for the reason why Nigeria is the way it is, because we are the ones who go to the polls. The INEC officials are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of the policemen, the soldiers, they are Nigerians. They didn't come from Togo. Mm -hmm. These are the people we have chosen. 2023 is a lot clearer. We have no excuses. It's a clear choice between light and darkness. I have no hesitation in describing both Atipu and Tinubu as twin horsemen of the apocalypse. There is nothing about them that inspires hope or change. If anything, they seem like the sort of forces that consumes life, drains out the energy. These are old men who should be sleeping somewhere. If they have anything, they should be paying penance. And they're advising people about how not to govern, how not to amass, how not to consume but they still want to be part of the narrative into a future that they have already destroyed in conjunction with the disaster that they have to enthrone in office in 2015. So I don't understand 
how anybody will tell me that they use their God-given brain and we as a collective ended up with either a tiku or a milokon. You know, Kisha and Olokon, <laughs> it is us. It's our turn. It's our turn as Nigerians. Peter will be, is merely a totem. We, the Nigerians, we are the ones who are demanding that our country cannot continue to be like this. We can continue to be a reproach in the world. A very rich country, and yet you are talking about six. That 63 million is a lie. Double it. We are more, there, there are far more people. When you already have about 16 million children slapping the streets without any training, these are children of school age. They are not in school. You have children who are people who are already in their late teens, early 20s, who received no education of any sort. The only thing they know how to do is to beg, to steal. They are already lively drug addicted. And then some old men, decrepit old men with no record of good service, they coming forward, they want to take 20. No, our look on. This one is not about anybody. This is about us. The, the, the ones nobody hears. They tag you on the street, Chinelo, the Chukwe Maker, the Azan, the Kudira. It's our turn. It can't be their turn anymore. It can't be their turn. Let's even see if we can rescue this country from itself. So the but the people I believe are sufficiently motivated and they know and they have they've come to connect these issues. They've come to, what you see somebody sleeping in front of the place, it might look like a skit. But there is a there, there is a serious content to it. Absolutely. And the seriousness of the content is that in reality, you are going to have to recognize that we are either going to have this conversation with our ballots, or some people who are crazier than those of us advocating the ballot, they will drown out our voices eventually when we might have been silenced because the system cannot find room for our demand for change. Hmm. These are peaceful demands, and Absolutely. we are only asking people to exercise their powers at the ballot. Mm. All right, so I was going to say, um, Adela, I mean, quickly, I mean, you throw in your question and I'll come back again. Okay, so before I ask my question, um, let me quickly say that um, there's a quote I saw somewhere. It says that um, you cannot talk, you cannot preach God to the poor. You can only do that through bread. Mm. You cannot talk God without bread to the poor person. And I think that that's in, in, in itself fuels, I mean, you really cannot give what you do not have. Mm -hmm. If you do not know that, I mean, things, uh, certain things need to be in place. So it's easy for some people to actually justify and say that, oh, I think, you know, but, you know things will just be easy or Atiku things will be easy. Oh, but Peter Obi says, Jonathan, so the average person, and that's my own question, that what has been done i mean before now to ensure that the average person on the streets at the grassroots level understands what these three people bring to the game but that's on one side now my question is are there um is there um how would i say are we truly prepared to ensure that the integrity of the voting process oh, it's not compromised. I mean, it's easy to say that. I mean, we're all going to come out in droves to come and you know cast our votes and all that. And then when we and, see and, those and, people, and, and there won't be violence exactly. in the process. So who is going to protect the electorate? Absolutely, Daily yeah. Farah, you want to come in? Well, uh, let me say this. One of the first things that they've done actively over the years is to disconnect the people from the process. Mm -hmm. They do everything. It's a systemic wave of attack. Mm -hmm. They suggest it to you in the media. They tell you how your votes do not count. Uh, they want to rig already. They already rigged the election. Why do you bother? Your votes won't count. Oh, they, will, they won't work. What's the point? They are all the same. They've used all these over the years. And the people have, had become disconnected from the process. They became so disconnected that in the last election, the last presidential election, you had 27 point something million people voting, even though you had a total of uh, you had a total of 84 million registered voters mm -hmm. in 2019. You had only 27 point something voting, so it meant only a third voted. When you have that number of when you have that level of disconnection from the electoral process, 
it renders it that much easier for the active merchants in the system to hijack that system. Vote buying works better in that system. Ija uh, vote hijack works better. But we now have a situation where there was a balance of terror achieved, mutually assured destruction. And that is what has led to the 2022 uh, Electoral Act, mm. that amended Electoral Act. What you have today is a situation where the mere fact that the people have reconnected themselves to the process has now meant that it's going to be that much more difficult for the active buyers of votes, those who have tried to chase people away from using their powers. So it then means, as we have pointed out, that educating the voter becomes of primary importance. Now, my people have a proverb. They say, you haven't suffered and you say you are wise. Mm. You are lying to yourself. Seven and a half years, almost eight years mm. of worry has been a horrifying experience for everybody, mm. both the rich and the poor. That you have money does not render you immune from the disaster called worry. Mm -hmm. If you have money, insecurity is there for you to contend with. Mm. I used to travel to Ibadan like I was going next door, as bad as it was over the years. But in the last two, three years, I would have palpitation going out of Lagos. Even going beyond the Ekpe here is a problem, top place of Ibadan. So I'm not too sure that a lot of people require too much encouragement to understand that there are consequences to vote. So if anybody is telling you that uh, uh, it's because of Tinubu or it's because of this, the article gave me this or that one gave me this, frankly speaking, yes, they can blame the weaponized ignorance that has been unleashed on Nigerians for a long time to an extent. But I think when you have experienced the level of hardship that we have seen, no matter who you are, Nigeria has not been kind to anyone except those in power in the last seven and a half years. It hasn't been kind. It's not just about money. In every way, if you have money, you are going to be queuing for fuel, you are in trap. There is, there is just too much pain everywhere you turn. So that has been a consecrating factor. Mm -hmm. I imagine that we will still have those that you can rescue from their idiocies. There is nothing anyone can do about that. <laughs> but I think to a very large extent, Nigerians are sufficiently awakened mm. in this coming election. Absolutely. So I, I was going to ask you, you know, as a retired legal practitioner, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I had to mention that. You know, now that Thank the... You. Now that the there is... We know that the only system that we have in anything that semblance of good governance or whatever in Nigeria is the ballot. I want to ask you, in, in, in the real sense of the ballot structure at its stands, where does the power of the ballot start and where does it stop? Because you see, I hear all the time, people have elected. So we, because whatever happens now, I am very sure that it's not going to stop till eight years after. Mm. So if it is for good, it is eight years after. If it is for bad, it is eight years after. And I keep wondering, is that where the power of the, the ballot stops? You're smiling, but I'm just thinking. You know, <laughs> I'm, I, I am smiling because I think Nigerians should fasten their seatbelt. Hmm. We're about to oh, enter a rather momentous season in our lives. I'm excited. You know, growing up, I thought... Everything that could be done had been done already. Somebody already discovered the Niger, even though the natives showed him the Niger. Somebody is already the richest man in Nigeria, and that's not likely to ever be me. I'm not about to become famous for anything, but all of a sudden, there is the opportunity to bet a new Nigeria. Mm. And I'm excited about it. The truth of the matter is that if by the grace of God, Mr. Peter Gregory will be wins the presidency, Someone like me, you know, I've told you, I'm a revolutionary. I'm not looking for political office. I'm looking for change. I'm looking to see a country changed. There is not everybody who is looking for what I'm looking for that will carry guns. I have no guns to carry. If he wins, it means that the Nigerian people have managed to find a way to have their will expressed. But we will hold him to account. Mm. 
it's not just that you will win and we'll be clapping for it. You said eight years. There is no eight years. If he wins, he gets his four years to prove to us that he can do it. If he cannot do it, we will be sure to hold him to account. Because I'm not looking to go into anybody's government. I'll be right out here. And I'll be right out here. I'll be here to hold him to account. <laughs> At least, he says he will obey the rule of law. Abi, yeah. when we are protesting on the street, I expect that the commander-in-chief of the armed forces will respect our wishes mm. and our rights. And he will not dare to have them kill us like Wari and all his APC people had them shoot innocent Nigerians at the Lekito gate at Obi Igbo mm. in Kapanchan, Saria, the Shia that are daily killed like goats. That's because the law does not count in Nigeria. We are not citizens. So that happens. Let directly Peter Obi win first and then tell us that he will not do all the things he has promised, or at least we see him trying his level best to get it done. And we will then see who will stop him, and we, the citizens, will not mobilize onto the streets of Nigeria. It's our country, our local, and the intention is to make sure that whoever wins power is going to be responsible to us. He is going to be responsible to us. So I assure you, it's not a magic bullet. It's not going to happen overnight. It's a process, but with good leadership, honest, altruistic, visionary leadership. Nigeria is rich enough, both in human and material resources, to become a first world country in three generations. Mm. It doesn't require more than that. It does not. And it's not rocket science. It's just honesty, altruism, the readiness to work for all, not for a few. That's all that it requires. And I'm telling you, look, my next birthday I'll be 55. There is nothing that will please me more than to die in the knowledge that these things were achieved in my lifetime, or at mm. least we started our journey in that direction whilst one is yet alive. Other than that, what, le what is left? So please, don't worry yourself. Let's get this, let's get over this order first, and then let's see what happens next. It's our country. All the children, look, I don't know if you guys are, I don't know how many kids you lot have, but I, I say this as a fact. I know none of your children are in government schools. Why? You all went to government schools. All of you went to government schools. I can almost bet my last time that you went through government schools up until university, but none of you sent your children there. That's because the state has already failed. We are the ones subsidizing the state's failure. If we don't rescue it now, does it mean that our children would have to send their own children to primary schools in Ghana, mm. or what's going to happen? Mm. Or we'll be spending all of our salaries educating our children, and once they are about, about to enter secondary school, we start begging or doing bad or what? <laughs> we have to rescue our country. Okay. Uh, you, you know, the, the, the thing is actually interesting because the... The thing I, I hear you say this, and I, I, I keep on saying that the kind of system that we have in Nigeria, I don't want us to. If there's People any build systems, mm. yeah. so if People. there's well, people, yeah, that's the truth, right? Uh, and so if there's any mistake, or because truly, I believe that this is a time that would determine whether Nigeria will truly come out of, you know years of because i mean it's, yeah. it's really appalling uh, the other day um i saw a link that we have been our our passport has been further brought down to some ranking that i refuse to read you know because <laughs> i was just a bit like upset that how much more can we take as nigerians right we go outside of the, the country and we're doing exceptionally well and where we are supposed to be thriving as a country we do not have you know the, the the what's it called that 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 playing field to be able to thrive not because we are not brilliant not because we're not exceptional people just because we do not have some so semblance of ex um, of what's called um visionary leadership that understands the potential that nigeria has and can place nigeria on the world map for positive lights not where not where we are today so i mean it's, it's quite interesting that the conversation is is unfolding but you see the video of the young man that um, sat on the on the floor and was, you know, talking about for for how many hours that they've been seated, only five voters cards, right, had been issued at, up until that point. I mean, that is very instructive. It tells me that 
you know so while we are shouting and and clamoring for the ballot let us go on to the ballot and all of that i mean i was speaking to someone today she was saying to me that the three times she attempted for capturing she that she actually felt sick she was rushed to the hospital she felt sick so at that point she said she's no longer doing it so there's still a big problem you know so and if these people have successfully you know suffocated the process of that ballot system even though yes i i strongly agree with you that they are they are fueling that agenda that the ballot does not work so that they can actually you know at the end of the get, make do what it is that they want to do and have their way with the ballot structure and corrupt it but you see they have suffocated the system so much that even the people that will be the drivers of this good governance or the drivers of change via the ballot they are all frustrated yeah. You know, so how do we even say that we want to change the system? How do we rely on that system? How do we see that happening? Because, and I, and all of this that is happening, a lot of people are saying, "I'm going to leave the country. I'm going to leave the country if Peter Obi does not win," because that's the that's what the young people are looking out for. What then happens if he doesn't win? Would there be violence? Would there? I'm just a bit, you know, unsure and just, you know, like you're floating. You don't know what's what's going to what? happen. What? Some yes, people have a brief to depress the voters' expectation. Hmm. It's their job to ensure that you are despondent to the point of believing that the vote would not matter and that the system has already assured the negative outcome, regardless of what we do. But I'll, remember, I'll remind you of something. I think it was the same Emilio Khan in the leaked video. He was explaining to his band of uh, whatever, and he said to them, power is not granted a la car. You grab it. You, you grab it. That is how you... But the man was telling the truth. Power is not given a la carte. Those who desire change understand that they must stay the course. Mm. Sometimes they must die before they go into the battle. Mm. Die to all of your fears. Die to the threatened consequences. Die to the inconveniences. That is how you go into battle to win. You die to your fears. It is not like you are unaware of them, but you die to them. Those people who went to sleep or pre show the readiness to sleep in the place. They were showing how far they were prepared mm. to go to defy a system that had been rigged and designed to prevent them from exercising the right that they were determined to exercise. Now, in, it might interest you to note, you know, I told you earlier, I said only 27 point something million voted out of 84 million registered voters in 2019. Mm. If all we do in this election is double the number of people who voted in the last election, which means that we are not even dealing with the newly registered voters. Mm -hmm. And all we are asking is that more of the people who are already registered and did not vote should go out to vote. If that is all we achieve, we would have achieved the revolution in 2023. Mm. Because the only reason we are where we are is because the people had become completely disconnected from the process. Mm -hmm. They had become disconnected, disenchanted. They, they could, you see, there is cause and effect. But our people have become so focused on survival because of the existential poverty that had been unleashed against them. They had become disconnected with the fact that elections have consequences. And when you abandon governance to fools, you will suffer their reign. And that is exactly what has happened now, that we have a totem sat in our presidency. And we have all sorts of dunces and morons populating our congresses mm -hmm. and government houses. I'm not abusing them. I know this sounds abusive, but I'm merely describing the quality of rulership that we have endured over the years. Because that is the only thing that could possibly explain the ruination of a blessed country to the point where it is today. So if the people understand that elections have consequences, 
they go and sleep in INEC office like the persons that you have highlighted. If and when people understand that elections have consequences, you find situations where those who had abandoned their PVC and detached themselves from the process, they will reconnect themselves because they understand that whether we want violence or not, some people are determined to change Nigeria from this ruinous state in which it currently exists. Not all of them speak the language of peace. Mm. Not all of them are interested in the ballot. Too many of them are already disconnected from the ballot. All they want is to tear this country apart. Mm. 2023 represents probably the last opportunity we would have as a people to freely express our will and demonstrate the direction in which we want to travel into the future or whether we want to raise into the ruinous past. Hmm. This is a choice that has been competently clear. And I'm not sure that any reasonable person in 2023 can say that they couldn't choose, they didn't know. For the first time, we actually have more than two candidates. It's not just the letter Y mm -hmm. of the same family in two branches, mm -hmm. PDAPC. No. For the first time, we actually do have a choice. It's, and it's not a third force, it's a second force. Because the choice between Atiku and Tinubu presents no real choice, really. So for the first time, thanks to God, we do have a choice. So as far as I'm concerned, 2023 is not a tea party. It's not going to be easy. The system is being asked to kill itself. It's, in his, it's not in his enlightened, selfish interest to die. So it is we who want change that must be unyielding in making sure that we continue to insist on change. We we'll continue to insist we will pick our PVC. If you like, lock the place. We will sleep there. <laughs> when we pick our PVC on election day, now we and you, that BVC, that uh, BVS or BVAS, the way they say it must work, you must accredit all of us, show us, every one of us must see when you finish, you count it in front of us, all of us sees it, see. and then we know the result from that place. Not that you go and do abracadabra in some collation center, the local government collation center. So there are so many things that has happened that if we ourselves understand that this is the last chance for us to avoid carnage in our country, mm -hmm. let's connect ourselves regardless of the inconveniency. The system does not want to yield. It's up to us to insist on a change. Absolutely. All right, so, um, oh, we lost the com. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hey, Daniel, happy new year to you all. The ballot and the drive for good governance. Mm. It is high time the voice of the youth and, the, uh, and their vote count. Enough of depriving the youth of their own rights. Atiko Antinubu should go and rest because this is not the time for old men. The both of them should retire from politics and give fresh blood a chance. These people are desperate to be president and they know that they cannot deliver. I am tired of watching repeat shows. Ah, sorry, yo. Thank God the live show is back. I have missed you ladies a lot. Good to have you back. My name is Daniel Ilo. I always read Glafa. We missed you too. <laughs> but you see why we, went? We, we didn't start early. But quickly, let's take more comments. Okay, this is um, Austin from Delta State. He says, um, nice to witness your first edition after the break. Thank you very much. Kudos ways. The new look starting from the signature tune, the setting all noted with joy. <laughs> happy New Year and happy year back. On the, topic, on the topic, ballot is just a step, but with informed and knowledge based on the choices made matters Okay, because um, I'm yet to be convinced that the electorate will will ensure ethnicity, religious bigotry, and knack for financial inducements. Mm -hmm. Forget the euphoria. After the election, let citizens, civil society groups, and the fourth estate of the realm rise and closely monitor governance and be courageous to raise alarm and point to the right direction when necessary. God bless Nigeria. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, this one says, Dale, I really want to thank God Almighty for your honesty, sincerity, openness, and truthfulness of your contribution in this topic today. I pray for God Almighty to bless and keep you. 
You're very correct. It is our fault as the poor masses in continuing to bring sick and immoral individuals to corridors of power to lead us. In such, our action shows that we the poor masses do not really know what we want, or we are very sick and immoral as the people we bring to power to lead us. We need to change this whole rubbish. We have come of the age to do it this time in this country. Not only that we want to elect them, but we also demand good governance from the people we elect. We all must learn to be on the streets to demand for any change we want. And this is from Santos. Thank you, Santos. Thank you, Santos. So, Dele Faratimi, you are the um, spokesperson for the Labour Party presidential candidate for South West, West Region. Tell us why you think your man, Peter, will be... Even though a lot of youth are really excited about the freshness he brings to the elections this 2023 and they are hopeful, tell us why you think he's truly the right man for the job. I mean, you've said this in several quarters, but I need you to tell our own ways people why. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, because I recognize the pivotal moment in which we have found ourselves, I make no mistake about it. 2023 is an inflection point in the life of Nigeria. I also know in recognition of the moment, and let me go a little biblical here. Those who read their Bible more regularly, they will know the proper references. For it says that it is given to the children of Ishaka mm -hmm. to know the signs of the times. What I know, and I've been saying this, and I've said it on your program since about two, three years back. I said that uh, it is the turn of Ndigo. I said that here. Yes. I didn't know what who that Ndigo would be. So I thank God that the Ndigo has proven to be a man who is worthy of my support and of the support of a host of other worthy Nigerians as well. So I recognize that in 2023, one man is not going to make the problems disappear, but it takes a driver to move mm -hmm. a car. Okay. And um, those who have driven us in the past have had absolutely no idea of where they are going. And Buari has shown clearly the consequences of entrusting a carpenter with a car to repair. He has damaged, he has made the rotting situation even worse, to borrow Tinobu's Bula bala blue vocabulary. <laughs> Bula bala. Bala blue blue. Yeah, yeah. So to borrow from him, reality is that Peter Obi is the only person who knows where we need to be going as far as I'm concerned and how to get there. Absolutely. In this point, in this moment in time, they say follow who no road. Follow who no road. <laughs> All right. On that note, deliver to me. I would like to invite you again to the studio because again. There's a part two to this conversation I would like us to have. Yeah. There's a structural systemic problem that I think that, you know, given from his, his leadership under, I mean, as governor in Anambra State, right? What structures, you know, can, can we see that was built that, you know, continued? Because, again, that is another basis that people are trying to compare his candidacy and that of uh, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed because they oh feel like them. there's I a structure. So maybe we'll do a part two of that conversation. We should. I mean, yes, we we'll do a part two. Thank you so much for your time. You always yeah. honor our invitation yeah. and we are really happy about it. We also went to the streets. <laughs> Bye Thank bye. you. <laughs> now, we went on the street um, to, to hear what you are saying, but we're going to have that conversation tomorrow. We will talk to ourselves. We'll hear from our people on the streets. We'll do a part two of this conversation tomorrow where we'll also hear what you're saying on the streets. And we have our very own Dami on the street. She will bring us the reports that she went to, you know, to gather Started. today. But thank you, Chinelo. Thank you, um, Diola. We had a fantastic conversation. Thank you again, Deli Faratimi. Now, before we go, do ensure you follow us on all our social media platforms at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quotes today, um, we're saying that if we don't vote, we are ignoring history and giving away the future. It's as simple as that, right? So whatever it will take for you to go out there, I have my PVC, Chinelo has a PVC, D has a, we all have our PVCs, right? Whatever it will take for you to get your PVC and vote, you are securing your future. So this is the time to change our history. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. live. 
as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.